All right, let's get into our first discussion for the day. We've been following the uh, kidnap of six students from Ekwe Model it's College, or you won't lie, in Lagos. And uh, Peter Jonah, Isiak Rahman, Debayo George, Judah Agbaosi, Belumi Phillips, and Farouk Yusuf were abducted from the Lagos State Model College in May. Well, 55 days on, the six boys are yet to gain their freedom. When will they be reunited with their parents? That's the question we've been asking every day. Well, you can join the conversation online by tweeting at TVC Breakfast on Twitter using the hashtag ekwe our guest in the studio is a social commentator and strategy as well as leadership expert, Adeyemi Makbadiru. Thank you for joining us on the show. My pleasure. Yes, we are still counting days, yet the boys are not back. What is the security uh, agency doing wrongly? Well, it's, it's really difficult to pinpoint and say exactly this is what the security agencies are doing wrongly, but even as an outsider, you must know that this must have been a failure of intelligence on the one hand, and uh, perhaps also uh, a tactics on the part of the security agencies, in the sense that um, they seem to look at this as a very sensitive issue because lives of children are involved, and perhaps that is why there seems to be a paucity of information as to what and what is being done um, to get these children released. But 55 days after, one can only imagine the trauma that the children will be passing through, uh, the, their parents, and the implications even for the security and economic uh, situation uh, in Nigeria. Okay, yeah, I mean, let me put you on hold and then let's, let's go out on TVC Entertainment. We'll be back on, on this. Let's go out on TVC Entertainment, but viewers there can switch over now and follow what we're discussing here, everything we're talking about on DSTV Channel 418 and GoTV Channel 45. You can also watch us on Free TV Channel 701 and StarSat Channel 270 and of course on Star Times on Channel 307. Right, 55 days and still counting, and we just hope we don't have to count again no, no. when these boys return. Uh, we are discussing the kidnap of six students from a model college in Lagos, and mm. uh, we have with us uh, Yemi Makbaderun. Uh, he is a social commentator and a strategy and leadership expert. Uh, we've been talking, we just started talking about this. Now, Yemi, uh, when it comes to sensitivity, because people have used that uh, statement several times, how sensitive the government is to the parents, when it comes to engaging with the parents, when it comes to engaging even with the public to give them some level of uh, sense of belonging on one hand, even the sense of security on the other hand. How insensitive or sensitive would you say the government is when it comes to their engagement with the parents of these children? I again, it's, diff it's difficult to say, mm. but the fact that you do not have discordant teams and you do not have the parents, you know, being in the media um, all the time complaining, protesting, and the rest of it suggests that there may be an appreciable level of engagement, you know, with government isn't and it, the security isn't agencies. Isn't it because uh, it seems the parents have t taken the, the matters into their own um, hands because we've heard uh, that they paid 10 million naira ransom at a time and then had to pay 21 million naira more and then the kidnappers are still demanding 1.5 million naira from them so isn't it that because we've heard that they've even lost faith in the government and the police so don't you think so that's they why they have to chart their own course well, exactly really ir ir irrespective of what uh, effort government is making I i'm not a government spokesman but I also know from position of you know, authority that one has occupied that the, um, there are quite a number of things that go on behind the scene that you don't want to make public until results are achieved. And uh, irrespective of the effort that government is making, we do not expect 
that the parents will just actually fold their arms and rely only mm -hmm. on the government. So I expected that the parents will also make spirited effort to see how they can complement whatever government is doing. Don't forget, no government will come out to tell you, for instance, that it has paid the ransom for the release of any uh, uh, abducted person. But we all know that globally that goes on. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you may glean that from the parents, but you will never have the security forces or government openly admit to, to, to doing that. Mm -hmm. So I think that there is some level of contact uh, between the abductors and government and government agencies and possibly even the, 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 the parent. But the, the, again, the question is, for how much longer do we really have to wait exactly. to get that, these Exactly. That's, that's the big back? question because the point is, if there is an engagement somehow, we, we want to assume, I, I totally mm. agree with you, we want to assume because uh, <coughs> we've not heard officially from government what they're doing. But if we assume that there's an engagement or some sort of engagement or contact between them and it's taking 55 days mm. because what the parents want is, is not the strategy. Just it is the their children back. coming home. Mm. So if 55 days going to almost two months now and the kids are not home, is that engagement? Is it fruitful? Are we going to say it is fruitful? Well, you see, um, globally, mm. the issue of abduction and kidnapping is actually prevalent. I want to say authoritatively that every year, thousands of kids are actually abducted in the United States, but not for economic reasons, largely not for economic reasons. Um, in this particular instance, I think the best approach is to hope and do what we can, just like we're putting this on the front burner on a regular basis to mount some pressure on the, because I think at some point they're going to, you know, tire out. I mean, you can't keep six children, I mean, children for 55 days, you've got to feed them and the rest of it. But, they're like, they've, but they've, 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 they've taken some ransom, so they have some they, funds. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But then I think after some time, the, the, the security operatives actually understand the way this works. But like I said, I'm not holding brief for them, but mm. I believe that they are not folding their arms. And I also think that we can take this discussion further by looking at those things that we can do to prevent a recurrence. Because don't forget, this is the second incident of kidnapping in the same, same, school, same school in less than 12 months. Mm. And so that already suggests that there seem to be a lack of focus on security of, of the children. And generally, we seem to have a lackadaisical um, attitude to proactive measures to prevent such things from happening. And so I think we can take this discussion also further to make sure that what we are trying to grapple with in Igbonla is not replicated even before this is resolved. Well, there is already a, a notice sent to another Lagos State Model College in Badagri that, uh, that they could uh, kidnap students there. And so far, we've not uh, had anything been done there because our reporter went there like twice uh, mm -hmm. now. And then uh, talking about um, putting measures in place to prevent further occurrence of this uh, terrible act, uh, when it initially happened last year, October, uh, there were measures uh, the government said it, it would put in place or ordered some people to put in place, like mounting of a, a tar in the school, you know, uh, putting security operatives there. But till the second kidnap incident happened, uh, it wasn't mounted. The bush was not cleared. And, you know, it still made the children vulnerable. And, of course, that is why we are talking about this today. So what assurance do you, as a citizen now, mm -hmm. and that is what many are saying, and even the parents, that is because uh, these, these children are not children of uh, well-to-do yeah, people mm -hmm. in the country. So are you really assured that something positive uh, could be done this time around to forestall another occurrence? Well, I, I think that is where we should really be, be focusing our effort because what I see with um, government in Nigeria is that when things happen, Resources are mustard, but they are not done on a sustainable basis. And that is why I say we need to put in a lot of intelligence into all of this. For instance, do the public schools have 
closed circuit TVs, such that when crimes are committed successfully, at least you have a track, you have an idea of those who are behind it, and then you can, you can trace them. But you see, it's, it's easy to blame government, but when you look at the way even government or those who are, you know, in, um, in a command position in the economy and polity of this country, you discover that they don't even provide this for themselves. We've had ministers killed in their own homes without anybody having an idea who the perpetrators are. What that means is that as basic as a CCTV camera is, it was not even in the minister's house. So how do you now expect such a government to be alert mm. enough, to be sensitive enough, and to be proactive enough to provide this even for uh, less uh, prominent, if I may, uh, citizens? So I think that is why this conversation should, should go. Again, we should begin to uh, teach people, particularly children, how to respond to situations like this mm -hmm. um, so that when it happens they have an idea of being in control mm -hmm. and uh, not being caught unawares and they can manage the situation yeah we have seen cases like that in japan mm -hmm. where the there are drills carried out within yes, elementary self -defense. exactly self-defense drills within uh, elementary schools mm -hmm. just in case because of the threats from north korea yeah. often uh, they carry out these drills to, to make the students aware that in case there is any kind of, this is what you should do first, this is what you should do second, and all of that. All of those things are there. But do we have the resources and all of that to conduct such kind of drills right now? You see, most of these productive efforts really don't require the kind of resources in terms of monetary or financial okay. that we think they involve. Mm -hmm. It only requires intelligence, focus, strategy and it will for instance since the kidnap of the Ebola kids has there been any seminar or workshop for school heads on how to provide you know some form of um, security intelligence and the rest of it but i'm happy because i think it's in the news this morning that the lagos state government has taken a step by uh, discontinuing mm. vacation, vacation teaching. classes. Yeah, yes, exactly. because at that point, you really are not in charge of those who are coming to mm -hmm. teach the, the children, and then you have to keep them in an environment mm. that you are not in control of where anything you know could happen. And I think those are some of the policies that government and government agencies can also bring to bear to forestall this. Don't forget, the issue of kidnapping has become a phenomenon in Nigeria to the extent that people are now kidnapping themselves, mm. you know, mm. for, for, for <laughs> ransom. And um, I, I, I think we need to look at those causes, I mean, that we can do something about, such, such that the prevalence of these kind of things can be reduced. All right, you, you earlier spoke about uh, poor intelligence gathering ability of the police and making the, the efforts uh, really stalled. Uh, but then, how easy or difficult has it been, or will it be for the police, uh, you know, to do their job better? Because in Nigeria of today, uh, Nigerians do not see police officers as their friends. That is a major Canal that we also need to, to, to break. Really, globally, the, 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 the police is not seen, even in other climes, as being too friendly. Because one, they have the responsibility of preventing crime. And in the course of trying to prevent crime, they apprehend innocent people, they detain innocent people, they, they suspect and charge innocent people, and so on and so forth. So generally, Disposition to security agencies, particularly police globally, is poor. But it's even a worse scenario in Nigeria because the police themselves do not portray themselves as people that should be respected by, by, by the public. And of course, they have reasons for this. They say their welfare are not properly taken care of and the rest of it. And that is even one area we need to investigate mm -hmm. because if you don't have complicit security agents, some of the crimes that are being committed will not actually happen. And it's not limited to Nigeria. Everywhere in the world, you need to look out for 
security agents agents that are complicit. The bad you know? eggs. Yes, the bad eggs, bad eggs indeed. But the only problem is in Nigeria, we seem to think that, well, the bad eggs are actually the rule rather than mm. the, exception. the exception. Okay. I think me, Mark Baderu, a strategy a leadership expert and social commentator, thank you for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much.